Hey everybody, I'm John Marzano. I'm the director of the Human Landing System Program at Northrop Grumman. And um, I, I'll just say <laughs> it's really going to be hard to follow Tim after uh, not only astronaut, but uh, missions to the International Space Station and, uh, and also just a really distinguished career running nan now NanoRacks and, and uh, working on a space station, which is pretty cool. Uh, now, I, w I will also say, though, that you know, I'm looking across this crowd and I see a, ver a lot of very young faces. Um, and that, it really does make me happy because, you know, at, I, I work at North of Grumman um, and, and frankly, you know, the industry over the last few decades and probably, probably as long as the aerospace industry has existed, has been kind of an old man's industry. Now, you know, I've got two little daughters, six and three, um, and you know, you know NASA is looking at putting the first woman um, and the first person of color on the surface of the moon. And frankly, that is there just couldn't be anything in my mind more exciting than that, uh, because it it just kind of it engages everyone in the world versus kind of the way things have been in the past, right? Um, now, so let me. I just wanted to tell you a little bit about my background, so you kind of maybe take something a little bit different away from my talk, which is. Uh, you know, I've, I've had a kind of an un unconventional career. Um, I started out, uh, <laughs> I, I, the, Tim, Tim's slide uh, on the Apollo 16 mission really spoke to me. Uh, there was a commercial resupply mission that he showed with the, our, the North of Grumman Cygnus spacecraft. And, um, you know, but to me, I wasn't alive when those things happened. And I'm sure many of you were not as well, uh, but, Essentially, I grew up watching the Jetsons, Lost in Space, Star Trek, Star Wars. Uh, to me, those were the things that actually inspired me. And I grew up kind of wanting to pursue that adventure, right? Be part of that adventure in some way. Indiana Jones, you know, those things were, when you're a kid, it's just larger than life. So f for me, that is absolutely kind of what inspired me to go the route that I did. So by the time I was in high school though, as good as I was at math and engineering, or math and science, I didn't know what I wanted to be. And so <laughs> my guidance counselor actually recommended engineering and I thought it was a good idea because it combined math and science and architecture and art, which is kind of like the softer, the softer side of your brain and I think when you combine those two things together, if you really want to be creative, um, engineering is a great place to do that. So, uh, so I ended up going to Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute and I graduated with a mechanical engineering bachelor's degree, went to work at Northrop Grumman in design engineering. And I, I've spent most of my career at Northrop Grumman. I did, I did leave for a few years and went into consulting, uh, which was a really good experience to get some consulting background. But to, to me, uh, at that point, design engineering uh, was kind of like the building block. Half my career has been design engineering. The other half has been um, essentially a mix of business related functions. So I, I got a master's in arch systems architecture and an MBA in finance. And uh, essentially I've done business management, uh, strategy, business development, and um, uh, now program management, running the human landing system prog program at Northrop Grumman. So the cool thing is, you know, the aerospace industry offers just an incredible amount of diversity in terms of types of roles that you can do. And uh, frankly, I've tried to take advantage of that. Try to learn as many breaths, uh, as many functions as possible so that I'm best prepared, right, to continue as a leader in the industry. So. I just, I'm showing this slide here and I really, I wanted to show this because it just shows kind of a lot of the different components that we're working on in terms of the overall Artemis and low earth orbit architectures. Um, you could see on the top left, of course, is, is the SLS rocket, the space launch system, which of course we, we have a big piece of. Um, the, the Cygnus spacecraft, which has the Canada arm grabbing it from the International Space Station. Uh, the Dynetics Human Landing System, which is actually where Northrop Grumman and Dynetics are teamed up right now in designing that vehicle. Um, and then 
the Habitation and Logistics Outpost and the Commercial Destination Free Flyer on the far right. So though, there's just an incredible amount of opportunities to work on right now. You know, I, the, the low Earth orbit space stations have to kind of, they have to emerge so that the International Space Station can essentially be retired. And at that point, then we can truly commercialize low Earth orbit, right? Um, so to me, all of that built up to like all of those, all of my education, all of my experiences across these different functions led me to be in the current job that I am in, which is to me like the greatest job in the world to actually work on the human landing system, um, which to, because essentially it, it's an enabling element for the next step, right? The, the next step, the, we're essentially on the precipice of what is going to be humanity's greatest accomplishment, becoming a multiplanetary species. And I, to me, that we, we don't really think about it in day-to-day -day life, but if we let that sink in for a minute, think about all the accomplishments humanity's had, like, you know, traveling across the Atlantic, finding the United, what is now today the United States, essentially, um, you know, designing computers, creating computers, like how it's changed the world. Imagine how landing on another planet and, and establishing a human presence there permanently will change humanity, right? We don't know what we're going to find. We don't know who we're going to encounter. Um, it's, it's absolutely staggering when you start to think about the possibilities. So uh, to me, you know, the one thing that's missing, I think we have, we have lots of global support uh, from an from a objective perspective and also from a budgetary perspective, but we, we also have, uh, you know, support from a, uh, a um, uh, like a technology perspective. We have all the building blocks, technologies, and uh, we also, uh, when you combine those together, we, what we're missing, though, is critical mass in terms of staff, critical mass in terms of steam, uh, skilled labor. And that is, that is a norm across the aerospace industry. I don't know if it's just domestically, but I'm assuming it's probably globally at this point. So um, in order to accomplish the mission, which is to become a multiplanetary species, and of course the objective of that is one, to preserve human life, because Earth may not be around forever to sustain us. And two, to expand our understanding of the universe, we need to make sure that we've got enough STEAM-related staff that is focused on the mission. We can't get distracted by things like, you know, petty global conflicts that really don't, don't you know, benefit anybody. Um, in the long run, right? We have to stay focused on doing good things for humanity, which is to become multiplanetary. So, um, you know, every one of you, and uh, to me, every single decision I've made in my career has been with the purpose of making a difference. And I, I hope that that is exactly how you guys, why you're here. And I think that now's the chance, if you want to jump in, I mean, there's lots of things you can do in the space industry, but human exploration is, I mean, there's nothing like it. I've worked on other satellites. I've worked on, worked on the James Webb Space Telescope, the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. Uh, I've worked on the commercial resupply missions to the International Space Station. But there is nothing like what is coming with Artemis and what is coming with the missions to Mars. So uh, with that, um, I'll end my talk and say thank you very much for the time and I, good luck to everybody, thank you.